How about doing something different today? I wanted to be first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know Valentine's Day is long gone by the time this video is going up, but a little love never hurt anyone, right? Today, I'm skipping the fiery side and looking back at some of the most flirty, romantic, and saucy moments from the show. Yeah, Hell's Kitchen definitely has a ton of passionate people if you know what I mean. All about the fingers. It's no secret that many contestants developed crushes on Chef Ramsay during their time on the show, and Holly was definitely one of them. Chef Ramsay is cute. He looks like a real person. Calm down, he's a married man. And in turn, the fandom is crushing hard on the winner of season 7. I gotta admit, those are the prettiest pairs of eyes I've ever seen. Holly, you gave us some pretty entertaining moments. She was bold, audacious, and let us in on some of the spiciest secrets. I have probably the biggest porn collection out of anybody I know. I don't know. <laughs> Wait up, that's not all. In case you missed it, there was a time when she also confessed this. No, I've made, I've made porn with... It's never been aired anywhere that I know of. Yeah, a lot of interesting revelations, huh? Holly also had cute, flirty moments with the blue team, like, for example, remember the hot tub scene with Ed? After the blue team returned for the reward from the sandwich challenge, Holly joined Ed in the hot tub and playfully encouraged him to drink more. To add to his bad feelings in the morning, never hurt. Ooh, you feel the vibe here? It was too hard to ignore. Later, Siobhan joined them, and Ed, feeling the vibe, started to dance. And I come out to the hot tub, and there's Ed and Holly, and they're like fooling around and being silly. Suddenly, in a playful moment, Holly accidentally ripped off a part of his bathing suit. Accidentally or intentionally, I don't exactly know. How about we rewatch that bit and decide for ourselves? Uh, I'm glad I have my goggles on. Oh yeah, so that happened. Now, question, at the risk of sounding like the morality police. So, the editors still include these intrusive close-up shots, especially during the hot tub scenes? Although it's more prevalent in older seasons, it persisted long beyond them. You better watch out, Cody's on the loose. This one over here, Big Booty Judy. Can I, can, can I get your number? Can I, can I cook for you on Wednesday night? Given it's a cooking competition and not Big Brother we're talking about, were such intrusions into the privacy of the contestants, especially in the dorms, necessary? If you ask me, it was something HK fans could do without. It feels completely unnecessary, like a relic of early 2000s misogyny that the show just couldn't shake off. Everybody who saw my fun muffins, y'all all owe me $20. And it's not just the women, the men experience it as well. You might not notice it immediately, but it's definitely there. They'll be in the changing room, and suddenly it's on screen, even with unnecessary voiceover and all. It's pretty weird if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, I get it. It's all for the views, but I mean, are the conversations they have in bed or in the bathroom really worth sacrificing people's privacy? What's your take? Don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comment section down below. But here's another point. Since they were aware of the fact that they were being filmed, how did they not think twice before cheating on national television? I guess you already must know who I'm talking about. Fooling around when you have a fiance? Yuck. It's only natural that Andrew was ditched by both of them. And if you take Heather at her word, she wasn't even aware that he was engaged. I knew that he was a single father and I was a single mother. They show me looking at Heidi going, awkward. So that's where I became the home wrecking whore and the slut and I've been called every other name. It sucks that they edited so many things out to make her look like the bad guy here. And Andrew, what a douche. Anyway, back to it, Polly was a natural flirt. She was as good at it as she was cooking. During the 10 pound lobster challenge, Polly faced off against Ed as the first contestant from the red team to have her dish judged. Nervous but determined, she presented her butter poached lobster with ginger lobster sauce and a fennel salad to David Lefebvre. To her relief, the dish received praise for its harmonious blend of flavors, securing her victory over Ed that round. It's good, it's good. You get the ginger, you get the flavors that you're talking about in yeah, the vegetable. I think in terms of creativity, this one's a little bit more creative. I think in terms of execution, I would choose this one. Well done, Holly, Thank congratulations. You. However, she was surprised when neither Benjamin nor Jay managed to secure a point, especially considering they were pretty strong competitors. I thought they would have killed it, both of them, because they're both like, really great chefs. With the score tied at one, Holly's dish ultimately impressed Ramsay the most, earning her recognition as the best overall. Holly, yes, you've won it for the red team. <laughs> dish was the best by far. 
They were treated to a lavish reward, indulging in a caviar tasting at the prestigious Petrosian Paris, followed by a shopping spree worth $1,000 at Kitson. As they rode in the limousine, Holly couldn't contain her excitement, describing the experience as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and expressing her love for winning. At the caviar tasting, Holly found herself charmed by Alexander Petrosian, finding him adorable as he provided instructions on tasting caviar and champagne. Alexander Petrosian is adorable. You should take a zip of the champagne to clean your palate. It seemed like the two were pretty into it. Perfect aphrodisiac. <laughs> But season 7 is best known for Holly's flirtationship with Smurf, aka Jay. You run by the hour? A special, a special <laughs> rate. We're not that type of hotel, so. No! It all started during the punishment after losing the presentation challenge. When Jay suggested that she polish the wood, whew, starting off with an innuendo already, she playfully flipped him the bird. Later on, she joked with Jay about polishing on her knees, with everyone picking up on what she was putting down this time around. Jay! Yeah? You spray out polish? <laughs> Gross. They were trying to keep the mood light throughout the punishment because, let's face it, it would have been incredibly dull otherwise. Two goals in Hell's Kitchen, and one is to win, and my second is to sleep with Holly. Man was down bad. He didn't get to achieve his first goal, but what about the second one? Did they hook up? It would have been the ultimate example of the enemies to lovers trope, considering they were the two finalists and rivals. We just joke around about sex. <laughs> Don't choke. <laughs> Don't they look like a bunch of teens? Then came the budget challenge. Holly found herself unsure of what to cook as she hurriedly grabbed some ingredients to stay within the $10 budget. However, when it came time to pay, she ended up more than two and a half dollars over the line, unlike the others. My dish has tons of different flavors in it. To actually get them to all tie in together, that's where it got tricky. Despite this setback, during the cooking time, Holly focused on blending various flavors into her dish. She knew that it'd be a challenge to harmonize them all. Presenting her creation last, she showcased a daring five-spice ahi tuna with bacon, parsnip puree, and kumquat sauce. Her dish impressed the judges with its boldness, bright components, and delicious flavors. The flavors are definitely there. The parsnips puree, it really tastes good. Congratulations, you have an average price of $29.66. I'm feeling like I'm on cloud nine. Holly was ecstatic to receive a day of luxury at the Peninsula Hotel in Beverly Hills, accompanied by Jean-Philippe. Additionally, she was granted a generous $1,000 shopping spree at Surface for kitchen supplies. To top it all off, she had the privilege of selecting one person to join her on a reward, and she chose... I'm gonna pick Jay. Thank you. Jay! He deserves a drink. Upon returning to the dorms, Holly wasted no time in expressing her excitement. Quickly changing attire and eagerly anticipating sharing a drink with Jay, it was a date. I'm not wasting any time. I actually get to unwind and relax with Jay. That's amazing. So, on the way to the peninsula, Holly spilled the beans on why she chose Jay for the reward. So that's why you picked him, because he was second. Yes, and the blue hair. I think it'll be really fun with Jay. Actually, a really cool guy. I like Jay. But let's be real here. She totally had a crush on him. Then they got all flirty, complimenting each other's dishes and stuff. Holly even joked about turning the car around to pick someone else up, which was really hilarious. When they arrived, she opened up about her life, saying that she was 24 and had been to culinary school. I went to culinary school, took a year off because I had a son. How old is the little one? Four. Four years Four. old? Mm, and he lives with his dad. But there was a certain unwanted someone along for the ride. We know each other really well. <laughs> All I could think of is, why is John Philippe still here? Ah, uh, our poor third wheel. And when Jay mentioned that he was single, well, things got interesting to say the very least. No, no, nothing like that. No, no girlfriend. He was saving himself from me. <laughs> <laughs> they found everything they needed while shipping. I mean, shopping. And maybe a little more. It's a multifunction paddle. I think everything with you is multifunction. Hey, are you going to buy anything for the rest of the team, or are you just... Fuck the rest of the team. When they got back, they wasted no time getting into their swimsuits and hopping right into the hot tub. Things were heating up between Holly and Jay, but just as things were about to get cozy, Autumn crashed the party. I brought you guys Hurry up. Holy crap. Buzzkill. And then she lost the cooking school challenge, but Holly hit the jackpot when Jay chose her for the reward. They scored a ride over LA, which was totally unexpected. On the way there, Holly was psyched about Jay's choice, even though he had second thoughts about not picking Benjamin. I didn't know he swung that way. Jokes aside, when they reached the runway, they spotted the Goodyear blimp and were in for a surprise. The balloon had a sign congratulating them. 
In all honesty, it felt like a romantic gesture. It doesn't say why we're being congratulated. It seemed like, you know, a marriage proposal. <laughs> As they soared above LA, Holly was buzzing with excitement. Even though she's from the area, seeing it from up there was a whole new experience, especially cruising above Hell's Kitchen. Ride high, babe, ride high. Moving on, apart from Holly and Jay, I shipped these two as well. How are my Nubian princesses doing out here tonight? Hey, you come with your flirt man stuff. <laughs> I like strong black women, and Barbie is sexy. It's a shame we didn't have more Barbie moments, huh? And Van? Everyone was a fan of that old-fashioned Texas smile, and he definitely knows how to use it to his advantage. I can charm the fangs off a rattlesnake. I can't hurt. Don't make me go put on my swimsuit, Van. You know you ain't gonna be able to handle it. Wait, is that Barbie blushing? Cute. Those two were totally vibing. You could practically cut the atmosphere around them with a knife. He's always hot. Like, he's hot blooded. Chicks love cuddling with me in the no wintertime. Yes. I have a California king by myself. I got a sleigh bed. It's all leather. I'm always cold. And now, this next one was pretty evident. I mean, she didn't care to hide her feelings in the first place. My impression of Gordon Ramsay is he's hot. Just kidding. It's not. <laughs> oh yeah, you knew it was coming. Virginia had the hots for Chef Ramsay, period. But whether the opposite was also true... What does he say on that? Kiss the cook. Yeah. yeah, not so sure. Uh, don't think so. Now I'm referring to the thrilling helicopter ride where Virginia was off to the Saddle Peak Lodge for lunch with Chef Ramsay himself. During the meal, Virginia expressed her excitement about getting to know Chef Ramsay on a deeper level. She was eager for a chance to connect beyond the kitchen. I cannot wait to get to know him, maybe on a different level. Ahem, <laughs> ahem, cough, cough. During the relay challenge, Virginia took charge as the first runner for her team. She swiftly relayed the instructions for the three dishes, chicken, tortellini, and salmon. She kicked things off by whipping up a fresh batch of tortellini with precision. In the intense 50 second relay, she effectively communicated all the crucial details to Rachel, setting the stage for success. The red team emerged victorious with a close 2 to 1 win, earning them a day on a yacht with Chef Ramsay himself. And what do you know, Virginia couldn't resist some playful teasing. Um, thank you for a nice lunch. Um, I'm going back now. Miss um, me. <laughs> Later, as the women lounged in their bikinis soaking up the sun, Virginia couldn't help but wonder aloud if Chef Ramsay would be up for some sunscreen duty if he were still around. I wish Chef was here to rub lotion on it. Oh yeah, things were sizzling for sure. During the 100 Portions Construction Workers Challenge, Virginia whipped up a turkey, prosciutto, and feta cheese sandwich. She served it with a side of undeniable charm to the hungry workers. Back in Hell's Kitchen, determined to redeem herself, Virginia awaited the verdict anxiously. To her astonishment, Chef Ramsay announced that her dish had been crowned the favorite by the hardworking crew. This earned her the coveted title of challenge winner. Slightly incredulous, Virginia couldn't help but question Chef Ramsay's sincerity. This prompted him to reassure her that the construction workers had indeed cast their decisive vote. Eventually, her victory secured a prize position in the final three, coupled with an exclusive shopping spree at Sur La Table alongside Chef Ramsay himself. Yeah, once again, some exclusive time together. During the reward, she described the experience as a dream come true. She embraced the opportunity to bond with Chef Ramsay as they perused the aisles. As the shopping excursion unfolded, she grew increasingly at ease with Chef Ramsay. Which knife are you gonna get? The big one. What is that called? A cleaver. Cleaver, thank you. And I'll name it Chef Ramsay. Quite charming, that man. This girl was sold, believe me. Now, let's fast forward to season 21. The red team lost the Mexican cuisine challenge, but Cody was winning hearts. I was nervous about a few things, and he'd be like, no, you should just try this and try that, and we just got to know each other. What happened was, Mary Lou wasn't too thrilled about getting down and dirty with the animals. I mean, shoveling poop definitely wasn't her idea of a good time in Vegas, right? As she and Cody tackled the pigs, she couldn't help but notice how he handled the situation like a pro. As he was calming her down, she was warming up to him. You guys look scary. Why is her hair purple? <laughs> okay, this is the person that you are. It's so cute. Something's brewing, I'll tell you that much. And then, in episode 11, Cody and Mary Lou were deep in a card game, with Mary Lou consistently coming out on top. Despite the competition, they kept things light, exchanging compliments and enjoying each other's company. Corey and Amber couldn't help but notice the camaraderie between them, with Corey finding it cute. But Amber cautioned Mary Lou not to let her feelings cloud her judgment. Yeah, leave it to Amber to throw a wrench in everything. However, after Mary Lou scored another win, she couldn't contain her excitement. You like me a lot. I know I do. I think Cody's very nice. How do you have a man? Where's the application? 
Yay, I win! Ah, <laughs> uh, now who doesn't love a good old-fashioned forbidden romance, huh? In episode 13, after a tough day, Cody and Mary Lou decide to unwind with a hot tub session back at the dorms. Mary Lou was looking to chill out, and Cody was quick to praise her for snagging the first black jacket of the season. Mary Lou got the first black jacket, and I feel like tonight is a very big catalyst for her. Sometimes at the end of a long day, Mary Lou is kind of like a light at the end of the tunnel. She's a very honest person, and it's nice to have someone like that. Oh yeah, they were totally into each other. And then, in the next episode, Mary Lou and Cody linked up in the living room, with Mary Lou admitting that she was worried about Cody potentially leaving. She confessed that Cody made her feel all tingly inside, and wasn't ready to see him go home just yet. Oh my gosh, I thought I lost you. Can never lose me. Cody makes me feel tingly, and he can't go home. Not yet. Looks like there's some serious chemistry brewing between these two, especially if they're sharing showers. Now, there's been a lot of buzz about Cody and Mary Lou possibly dating for a stretch. In that Hell's Kitchen Season 21 episode that aired on November 10th, 2022, during Trenton, the Season 20 winner's wedding, eagle-eyed viewers spotted Mary Lou and Cody seated together at the same table. And if you check out Cody's Instagram, you'll catch a few cooking and barbecue videos where you might just spot Mary Lou making a cameo dating back to March 2022. By the way, there is even some online chatter about their relationship status. Mary Lou herself responded to a comment on one of her posts, hinting that they called it quits either just before or shortly after the wedding episode aired. Sadly, they aren't even following each other on social media now. I know, it sucks for all the Cody Lou fans. Up next, during the 20-year reunion planning challenge, Natalie stepped up for the blue team, presenting their appetizer with flair. Her dish featuring ahi tuna and poke on toasted crostini wowed the judges with its perfect bite and consistent tuna. I really enjoy the consistency of the fish. I think it's great. I had the perfect bite. You hit it on the head for me. She clinched the win against Carrie, leading the blue team to a 3-0 victory. As a reward, they got to spend the day aboard a super yacht. Trust me, you are going to have an amazing day on the water. Natalie felt like a total movie star, basking in the camaraderie of her teammates. Things got a bit, well, cheeky when Paul snapped a pic of her butt as she exited the hot tub. That's creepy. Back at the dorms, a tipsy Natalie took an impromptu dip in the water pool with Jonathan capturing the moment on camera. I think a lot of the guys on the blue team, you know, they miss their wives, they miss their girlfriends. During their photo session, Natalie revealed her past gig as a model. I modeled for a while. I can tell. Moving on, in the same season before the second service, Carrie stood out as the lone woman who didn't bother to peruse the menu further. Instead, she opted for a glass of wine and some quality time chatting with Brendan. They were really into each other, and the tension was off the charts. Hey, Brendan. Yes? Come on for a sec. I'm not getting any exercise here. Well, I'll figure out a way for you to burn calories. Good for them. Get that action. Now, are contestants allowed to hook up on the sets? Here's what Kevin from Season 6 answered when asked to reveal some weird secrets about the show. He said, not weird, but contestants have sex on the show all the time. When asked to spill names, he was a hell of a tease. What happens in Hell's Kitchen stays in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> and oh, here's what Season 11 Dan revealed. Apparently, the contract does say no sexual contact. He added, there are a few days during filming where it would be possible with a lot of planning slash luck to hook up with another contestant with no evidence to be had. Not during rewards or punishments, nor is it after being cut from the show and staying at the sequester house. It's probably the only thing about filming that has never been publicly talked about. Often referred to as Fight Club because you don't talk about it. Now, I'll let another contestant spill the beans on that one. Woo! Man, that wild. It was, wasn't it? Now brace yourselves for the most bittersweet Hell's Kitchen love story. In an interview in 2009, Heather West was asked about the casting process. In her answer, she revealed, you only see the other people for a second, and you're not really allowed to talk to each other. For example, you can't exchange names or any personal information at all. But as soon as I walked in, I saw this girl, and she was my very first love at first sight experience. She was sitting there at the table, and I just knew right away. Curious to know who it was? Everyone's gonna be gone at one point, sweetheart. I think you know this. Rachel's making eyes with Heather, and Heather's making eyes with Rachel. Well, it had to be Rachel. The interviewer asked if they were together during the filming of the show. Heather responded saying there was, in fact, a no fraternization clause in the contract. Not that one would, could, or even had the time if they desired. They were literally on duty for 20 hours a day. 
Speaking about Rachel's elimination, she said, oh yeah, I cried. At that point, there was still a couple of weeks left. I was definitely upset. And of course, they captured all of that on camera. And that just made me more determined to do well. I wanted to make her proud. I swear to God, if I go, you better win. I don't know if everyone will miss you the most. Are you gonna cry? If you go, I will cry. My strongest bond is with Rachel. I love her to death. If Rachel did leave, it would only make me work twice as hard. That's just adorable, isn't it? And guess what? Long after the show, they were in touch. Heather said, we talked about spending our lives together and things like that. But some things got in the way and we just ended up being friends. Sadly, this story took a pretty devastating turn when Rachel passed away the following year. And Heather was swept with a feeling of deep regret. I didn't fight for her like I should have. After she passed, I had her name tattooed on my ribs. She was my life. I loved her more than anything. I mean, that's just devastating. So don't forget to tell your loved ones just how much you appreciate them. Now, I'm curious to know which contestants you shipped on the show. Make sure to drop those names in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. And if you thought this video was crazy, then wait till you see my next video right here, since it's even better.